All right, people, I'm back again. You know, people be like, why can't you just forget it? Just forget it. How does that work? Time heals wounds. You understand? You can't expect people to just forget what we do to them or what we say to them. You can't expect that. You can't expect it. You can't expect things to just fall back in place like they once were. You can't expect it. But time can heal anything. But the way it's healed, we don't understand. God may heal some things by reconciliation. He may heal some things by separation. Who knows? So yes, time does healing. But you got to look at them from a different perspective. Not from your own understanding. From God's. And the only way you can do that is you continue to call upon Him. You understand? You know, as I when I was younger, it took me longer to get over wrongs. I remember my first heartbreak. I it took years for me to get over there. My second major heartbreak took a long time too. You understand? But it's like, as you grow in Christ, the suffering phase doesn't last as long as it usually would. You get over it a little faster. You don't forget it, but you get over it a little faster than you would. Because then inwardly, we were still holding grudges. Or still mad about this, or this and that. Or we would blame ourselves. Or, and like I said, if, even if we've done something wrong, we're like, oh man, I deserve this. Well... Even if you deserve it, pat yourself on the back, get up, keep going. You understand? Move forward. You can't change what you've done. There's nothing you can do. You can't rewrite your past. You know that, right? It's not possible to go back and change things in your past. If you could do anything different, what would you do differently? Well, that's a, that's a question I don't even want to entertain anymore. If I could do anything differently. I don't want to do anything differently. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you'd accept the fact that you can't do anything differently. You just learn from your past mistakes and grow and be like, I just don't, I don't want to make that mistake no more. Or you may have hurt somebody. You're like, man, I just don't want to hurt nobody in that matter again. Forgive me, Lord. Help me not to make the same mistake again. And help me to make the same mistake not just trusting in man too, too quickly. Or one man for that case. You know, the Bible says, put your trust in the Lord. A lot of times, that's what we do. You know, like, let's say a rec reconciliation, a marriage reconciliation. What's the first thing normally come out one of the people's mouth? You, know, you can trust me now. And that's a red flag. Why is it a red flag? Because the Lord said, trust no man. You can trust me now. I won't do that again. You know what to prove that you won't do it again? Time. So just saying those words doesn't necessarily make it true. Do you understand? Time I realize, okay, you got to build that trust back up. You got to build it back up. It doesn't happen overnight. But in time, it's either two things. It's going to reveal that they were liars or it's going to reveal that they were trustworthy. But it's just a risk you take in this life. That's why God wants you to use discernment and be careful. Like I said, you can forgive, but still be careful. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's like, let's say you're walking on a pier, right? And one of the boys is loose, and you walk down it and it's broke. It bre it's, it's cracking a little bit. You know, like, you know for a fact, if you keep walking on that broken board, you're going to fall through and fall to the bottom into the ocean. So what you start to do with them cracks, you start to avoid them. You start to avoid the, the weak spots, the cracks. Because if you don't, you're going to be taken by it. You're going to fall right in it, into that trap. But God will reveal things to you. He'll show you things. He'll show you 
And it's up to you to make a conscious decision of what to do. Now he'll help you. But God is God gives us free will. He don't make you do anything. He helps you listen better. He said, my sheep know my voice. You're going to start learning his voice better. You understand? Like my life right now, I can't lie to you people. I don't understand what's going on. So I had to learn to go with the flow. God's flow, that is. Not even my own flow. I try to go with God's flows. Like certain things just happen, you like, this must be the route. You'll know. It gets a little easier. Like I, I, I told people the story. Like, you know, if you smoke weed, uh, let's say you smoke weed, right? And today you just want some weed so bad. And everybody you call, nobody got none. And you call, they, ain't, they ain't got none. Now you're running around worrying, you're stressing, you're trying to figure out how you can get some. You know what, folks that took 10 minutes, 20, 30 minutes to do, now it's been an hour and a half past. What do you do eventually? Now you can keep going. Like most people are like, I just don't give up. But eventually, I'm telling you, man, it's not going to go how you expect it. I'm telling you. Sometimes you were like, you know what? That's enough. <laughs> I guess it ain't meant. If you got to try extra hard for it, maybe it's not meant for you. You got to hear what I'm saying. Try extra hard for it. You know, I tell people all the time, man. When you live for God and you try to operate and you call upon him and try to operate in his will, everything falls in place. You don't have to really have to place the pieces in the puzzle because God is the puzzle master. He's the puzzle maker. He know where every part is. He know what part that's over there and this and that. It's not like a video game. He knows what parts are missing. You understand? He know what places you need to be. He know what people you need to be around. You don't know a lot of times. You think you know everything. You think you know where you're supposed to be. You think you know your route. Hey, be careful with that. Start putting yourself in a position like you God. Then he's going to let you know, hey, you ain't God. You ain't me. You understand? Oh, I know which way to go. Just take, for example, like um, a few years ago, uh, you really don't know what's going to happen a lot of times. A few years ago, I was driving a straight truck to go pick up a job, take it to California. I mean, not California. Well, I'm from California. Taking it to Florida. And uh, we got they had everything packed up. I got the uh, the truck loaded with the materials that we're taking. You know what I'm saying? And so we get to the, the scale and they weigh us. We were overweight. You know what I'm saying? For the truck size. You understand? Like, did I plan that out? No, but the thing is, it happened that way. And God delivered me from it. You understand? A lot of things you're just not in control. You just got to roll with the punches a lot of times. You understand? But you know, next time you'll think you'll think twice about what to do the next time. All right? You understand? I know this truck can't handle so much weight. I know I got to go across the scale. You take precautions. Right? In life, when things come up, you take precautions. If not, you're going to keep doing the same mistakes over. So guess what? In regards to people who you forgive, take precautions. Tread lightly. Tread lightly. One thing about time, it reveals truth. You know, I tell people all the time, God never keeps you in the dark about anything. He always tells you the truth. People can lie to you and steal and all this stuff from you. But guess what? God's going to never keep you all the way in the dark. He may not reveal everything right away because it might not be time for you to know certain things right away. But he'll reveal certain things to you. In time. If he want to. Or he can fix it even without revealing you something. But the thing is, you fear the Lord, right? And he, all the Bible says what's done in the dark will manifest itself in the light. Right? Will be manifested, made manifest by his light. So, you try to do no darkness. You try your best to live a life pleasing to the Lord. You know? So, if some dukes come out, it's going to be the truth. It's going to be the light. You know, if you do anything deceitful, I'm telling you people, don't expect just because you are forgiven 
that need to remain secret. Yet yeah, the Bible said, pardon a man whose sins are covered, who iniquity is forgiven, whom in the spirit of the Lord puts no guile. Now that's, I love that right there. Because I know like, when the Lord, when you get to a certain point, you know, God will cover your sins. Now think about this coming from David. <laughs> whose sin was spread abroad. What he did was spread abroad. Everybody knew in the end that he slept with Uriah's wife. Now, so how did he cover his sin? He forgave him. He gave him a little chastisement. He told him what the consequences were behind it. So was his sin completely covered, like uncovered, like nobody knew about it? No, people knew. People know when you do deceit. You understand? And God's going to make people know. Everybody might not know, but somebody's going to know. He sent the prophet to him. He sent the prophet, right? <laughs> to reveal some things to him about himself. And you think God won't send somebody your way to reveal some things to you? Just because you think you got away with it? He'll, he'll bring somebody to you and just freak straight out the dome. You'll be like, what in the world? How did, I ain't think nobody knew about that. But they say, him who made the eyes, shall he not see? Him, him, who, him who made the ears, shall he not hear? And he know the hearts of man? So guess what? Don't do it. If it's something that you don't want nobody to know, most likely you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Unless it's like you're trying to buy somebody a gift or something. But you know if it's deceitful and you trying to if you got a sneak to do it, most likely it's wrong. It's wrong. Because if it's not sneaky, you can be in the open with it. Take most adulterers. Do they just go out in the open and do it? Now you got some that don't care. They might be in the open. But guess what? They'll go to a whole nother area, a whole nother part of town. They sneak it. And things nobody see. But you got to think about it. As soon as you meet up with that other person, you got a chance for somebody else to see you. Anybody can see you. People think they got things planned out. I didn't see people get caught up in the craziest ways thinking they were sneaking around. Take, take this for example. When my husband is at work, right now and you know I can meet up with this other guy and go eat lunch with him over this place not knowing that the husband was invited by his boss or somebody else to eat lunch at the same place out of nowhere I heard about this new place over here and then you go in there and now you're called I'm just using that as an example you never know. You can't. You never know what God is trying to do. You understand? Right when you think you're getting away with it, you don't. David thought he was good. Shoot, I didn't. Uriah gone. I can make her my wife now. He tried everything to cover it up. He tried everything. Hey man, go, go home and lay with your wife. I can't lay. I can't go home because everybody else here they ain't found. So I'm going to stay here. That didn't work, so he tried something else. Started getting dirtier and dirtier. Send him to the front lines. Wow. You see what happens when you start doing dirt? It escalates. You understand? So, okay. After it escalated, and it's revealed, the truth is revealed, now the person finds out, what are you going to do? You understand? You see, you got a choice to make. You understand? Now forgiveness coming into play. You know, um, Bathsheba's dad, father in law, father, never forgave David for that. So that's why he, he played his part in destroying David's king, kingdom when his son Absalom. He never forgave David for that. And it actually ended up killing him. His unforgiveness. 
it ended up killing him. You understand? And the, the crazy part about it, it wasn't even it really in regards to him. It wasn't even his life. He was holding a grudge over his son and stepdaughter, however it goes. He was holding a grudge about what happened with them. Ain't that crazy? Wow. You know, some people do that. You know, like, like if my brother and sister now go through marital problems or go through problems, it's not up to me to be mad at they sick significant other. <laughs> it's not mine. It's not my business. You understand? Well, don't be angry for. I know my I myself has made mistakes that I regret to this day. But there's nothing I can do about it. I can just become a better person. And just hope whoever I wrong, forgive me. You understand? Accept my apology. But like I said, just because somebody accepts your apology, you can't expect everything to go back the same way it used to be. Right? So I'm just giving y'all some, some lessons on forgiveness today. It's not as easy as one, two, three. Might be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yes. Might be 20 step process before things are made right. Maybe longer than that. Some it may be three steps. But it's never the same with nobody. You understand? But just learn from your mistakes. Learn from it. Grow from it. Forgive people. Try your best to put it in the past. You're not going to forget it, but put it in the past. But you know, like, you ever uh, got a tool with somebody before? And it was like a heated, heated. Things were said, words were said. And when you see them, you remember it. Some would say, that's the devil. That's the devil. Sometimes it might be. But what if it's God? Try to tell you, hey, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. You understand? That's all I got for y'all today, man. I just, I know I have forgiveness issues too. And that's what came to my mind today. To talk about forgiveness. Forgive people. Let bygones be bygones. Move on. If you decide to keep them in your life and no need to bring it up no more did you hear what I said they like I forgive you and then every other day you remember what you did now think about that that's that's ridiculous so what was the point of you letting them back in to keep bringing up the same thing and the thing is if you feel you might even about to bring it back up you might not even it's make no might not even make sense to let them back in I'm just being real because you ain't fully got over it yet Cause all they're gonna do is make things worse. It is. But maybe, maybe God's like, hey, I ain't gonna let you forget this. <laughs> but you listen to what I'm saying, lean down on your own understanding. God knows what's best. But it's strange, it's never the same with everybody though. But just do it. Forgive. So God can forgive you. And let God make the decisions in regards to every situation that involves forgiveness for you. Have a blessed day.